This is a quick video on logic terminology. So here we have an array of animals. Uh, everything on the yellow in the middle here, the zebra and the horse, are mammals that have hooves, uh, so they're ungulates. Everything on the blue is a mammal, including, notice that the yellow is on the blue, so these are mammals. Uh, the cat and the dog and the sea lion are also mammals. And then everything outside the blue is not a mammal. So there's chicken, turkey, uh, alligator. So we can think now, this is sort of like the picture in the textbook where the uh, smaller yellow part is uh, A, and then the blue part is B, so ungulate and mammal. Uh, so we can say being an ungulate implies being a mammal, that is if we're anywhere in the yellow we are also in the blue, that's true. Um, we can say that uh, being a mammal is implied by being an ungulate, equivalently. We can say uh, if an animal is an ungulate, then it is also a mammal. Uh, or we could say being an ungulate implies being a mammal. Uh, or put the other way around. Uh, being a mammal is implied by being an ungulate, or uh, being a mammal is true if uh, the animal is an ungulate. Uh, you'd also say being an ungulate is true only if the animal is a mammal. You'd also say that being an ungulate is a sufficient condition for being a mammal or uh, sufficient for being a mammal. You'd also say being a mammal is necessary for being an ungulate. You could also say being an ungulate is a stronger property than being a mammal, uh, or uh, being a mammal is a weaker property than being an ungulate. Um, and finally, we could say it's impossible for to have a non-mammal if we have an ungulate, uh, which seems clear when we're looking at the picture like this. So those are a lot of phrases all saying the same thing and uh, described by this diagram here.